In this video, we're going to look at how we can import ETABS model data and loads into the Nest Foundation model. And why might we want to do this? Well, it will help save time and effort when transitioning from ETABS to S Foundation. And if we have the information of our superstructure already in an ETABS model, then we can import the following data into S Foundation. Support locations, reaction loads, load cases and combinations, and then we can design our foundations in S Foundation using this information. I'm going to jump into S Foundation now. And here we can see that we have a blank S Foundation model. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the File menu and then going to import an ETAS model. If I click on this button, it's going to launch a new dialog. And this is actually pointing me to a location where I've saved an MDB file. An MDB file is a Microsoft Access database that can be output from ETABS and read in by S-Frame or S-Foundation or even S-Concrete Multistory Designer. And this will contain the information that S-Foundation needs to design the foundations for that superstructure. We then also specify an output path, which I've put in the same folder, and it's going to have the extension TEL, which I've put in the same folder. I'm going to click the Next button now. And here I can choose what data I would like to import in from the MDB file that came from ETABS. If there were certain bits of information that weren't important to me for foundation design, I could exclude them or include them here. I'll click the next button again. And finally, I'm, I'm brought to the portion of this step of this process where I can specify individual load cases I might want to bring in, or maybe I don't want to bring in any load cases, but just load combinations. And of those load combinations, I may want to ignore certain ones like, for example, I'll just focus on the gravity ones. I then click the import button. And you can see here that S Foundation has read in this information and it's given me a log of everything that's come through. I'll click the close button now. And here I can see the superstructure that I've imported. And in this model, I'm actually going to see here that we've got some loads that have already been imported. We've got our load combinations that I chose to import. And I can even see the reaction loads here. If I just go to the spreadsheet window, under the loads spreadsheet, here I can see the reaction loads. And these have come directly from the support reactions in my ETABS model. And this is what's going to be loading my foundations when I go through and run the analysis. Now I want to add a foundation to this model. So I'm going to create a map foundation using the map foundation tool. And I'm going to specify the pad here to be 800 millimeters thick. And to make this easier for me to add the foundation here, I'm just going to switch to the plan view so I can look down on my model. And I'm going to start tracing out the extents of my pad. So it's just a square pad, and I'm going to draw in some pedestals as well. So now I've drawn pedestals at the bottom of all of my columns. I also have some walls in my foundation or in my superstructure that I want to attach to my foundation as well. And I'm going to use the wall option here. I'll just press the tab button on my keyboard to switch to wall mode. And I'll draw in the walls underneath my superstructure. So I have two walls in total. And this helps attach everything to my foundation model. Once I'm done, I double click on the last joint. And this foundation will draw in my foundation and generate the foundation FE model. So now I can zoom out and I'll switch to the 3D view so I can see the model a little bit better. And I can see what that looks like. Now if I switch to the finite element model, here I can see how the finite elements are created within my model. It's all based off of the finite elements that we have within our ETAS model. And our walls seem to be made up of just one large element. So we have to attach those to our mat foundation mesh as well. We also have a rebar view, which we can see here uh, has been created for us, but we can adjust it if we need to, and soil views as well. Now I'm going to go through and run an analysis in a code check. So I'll just click Run, Analyze in Code Check. And this foundation is going to run a nonlinear static analysis using the compression only springs underneath every single joint in my map foundation. So if those joints go into tension, the springs will be deactivated and they'll provide no stiffness. And after the analysis, I can see my results.
This is showing me here a code utilization for the governing code check, which is the loss of contact. And if I just expand this window on the right hand side, I'll be able to see here some of my code checks are failing, including the loss of contact, which is basically a measure of what percentage of our pads area is, has zero bearing pressure underneath it. So if you have a lot of uplift, you would expect this to be a fairly high demand on this code check. And the capacity of 0.1% of the area can be adjusted by the user. This is our default capacity. So the utilization is based off of that. I can actually look into the results in more detail here. If I want to look at the loss of contact in particular, I can look at the slow bearing pressure plot. And I can see for this particular load combination that I actually have a portion of my pad that has zero pressure. That's all represented with the gray, which you can see represents zero pressure. So most of the pressure is coming around the walls and the columns, as you would expect. And there are ways to address this within S Foundation. However, we'll leave that for another video. For more information about S Foundation, we encourage you to visit our website or check other videos on our YouTube channel.